Right, chappies, welcome back to race night, and this is actually part two of this particular installment. Doing things, switching things up just a little bit, not using racing software or um, writing down times. What we're doing, and I'll probably have to reset the the uh, the uh, comp CPU on this, is we're relying on the built-in timer on the track itself that gives you a long beep to let you know that it's the fastest lap uh, to determine... Um, well, which is the fastest car? Now, in the, the last installment, we tested the inside lane, and as I accurately predicted, the order went from fastest to slowest. Porsche 911, uh, Mercedes AMG, um, Aston Martin Vantage GT3, uh, Chevrolet Corvette C7.R, and Ford Mustang GTY. Those were the... Uh, uh, is exactly how I predicted it would be. Although I, was, I wasn't I was sure whether the Corvette or the Aston Martin would be third place. So we're going to do the exact same uh, test here in the outside lane, which we can actually go around faster because of the barricade. Uh, they keep Sometimes they keep the cars on the track when they otherwise wouldn't stay on the track, as evidenced by the um, scratches and paint residue all over my barricades now from where they've been scraped by these cars themselves. Now, I think the order is going to be exactly the same, although I could be mistaken with the Corvette and the Aston Martin. They may come in differently. So uh, what I'm going to say, my prediction is going to be first place Porsche 911, second place Aston Martin, no, second place Mercedes AMG, uh, third place Aston Martin, fourth place Corvette, fifth place Mustang. Uh, we may see an upset at third place because that's what happened in my last time trial for fastest laps in the outside lane. The Corvette did perform better than the um, uh, Aston Martin, but I was very concerned with not crashing, and I was uh, driving a little more cautiously, so that might have played into it. But we'll go ahead and start with the Mustang, if it will run at all. Again, this one has a short in the wiring, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I have to do an extreme thing to get it to work that I don't like to do, but hopefully we won't have to. Let's go ahead and turn this off and back on. Actually, let's not. I don't think we need to. Uh, I'm confident that the outside lane is going to be a faster lap, and we'll, we'll run this one around to test that. If I can get this Mustang around faster in the outside lane, then I can get them all around faster. So let's see. <laughs> I de-slotted immediately. Ah. Shh, it's not a stick. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, change our minds, which we reserve the right to do. We're gonna turn this off and back on. Okay, now outside lane. There's no way I can get this Mustang around as quickly in the outside lane as I did in the inside lane, and I don't know if they're all that way or not. I don't think they are. For example, well the Porsche. I can pretty much just hold the trigger down all around, except for that corner, so, yeah. All right, so here we go. Ford Mustang. There. D-slide. Yeah, this... This car kind of sucks, Chappie. That's all. I mean, I try to be nice about this because I know some of you are deeply offended when I criticize things you love, but this Ford Mustang really sucks. That just head on, just head on hit the barrier. Never even seen that happen before. Now, in this situation, since, yeah, I'm going to need to uh, just take my fingers. I'm not even going to show you what I'm doing. I'm getting some of the dust or lint or whatever might be on the floor off the connectors, which had no bearing in what just happened. And feel free to enjoy the scenery while I fix this barricade. There we go. Yeah. So, it'll be very easy to beat the Mustang here in this truck. Okay. 
Okay, that was the fastest lap. That was two. Yeah. All right, these slots so easily, okay? And uh, so I think we've tested this one as fast as it's going to go without you know, crashing and causing problems. Jeez Louise. Okay. Yeah, I'm really salty about this one. I mean, this one feels like a waste of money. And, uh, well, that's all I'm going to say about it. Now we'll test the Corvette. We're just waiting for the long beep, and that tells us, yes, it can get around faster than the previous car. And that's sort of the uh, test I'm, I'm uh, the hypothesis I'm testing. Okay. Now let me say again that the Corvette is my favorite of these. Uh, but it's, it's by no means the best car in the fleet. Okay. Jesus. What a bike. All right. Oh, it's already beaten the Mustang. Yeah. Oh, bad wreck, bad wreck. Let's see. Didn't lose a mirror. So we're all right. All right. Hmm. There we go, fastest lap. Yeah, fastest lap. Fastest lap. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Okay. And you know, I'm slowing down in that, but I'm, it's just the inertia is just too, you know, coming out of that straight, coming out of this, it's just too much for the car. So. I think that might have been the fastest lap. Yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've pushed this slot car to the limit here. Yeah. All right, we're not going to get any faster with it. Okay. So it is faster than the Mustang. But it also crashed more than the Mustang, I think. So that's the other consideration. And I'm working on that, Chappies. I just, just got to keep, keep racing them, keep practicing. Now up will be the Aston Martin Vantage GT3 with the um, blown-out tail light. I tell you what, before they do that, I need to hydrate. Okay. So, and again, we're just trying to uh, uh, beat... The previous car's fastest lap and uh, it seems like we're doing that pretty quickly with each of these let's see if I'm right with this one. it's possible the Corvette will be faster than this one and I'll never get a long beat that is possible okay and that's what we're testing Shh. I can drive it like that yeah that's exactly what it's gonna be all right Oh, jeez. That's a nightmare corner right there. It's an S-turn, you see. It's actually a left-handed turn there. Coming out of this.
Oh dear. We're not beating the Corvette's time here, Chappie. We're not uh, achieving a faster lap with the Aston Martin. That is interesting. Oh, there it was. There it was. That, that just said it was the fastest lap. Uh, let's see if we can top it one time. my attempts to beat that lap, I'm just wrecking this car. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I heard a long beep. And I think you probably did too, but I'll, then again, the, the sound of that engine may have drowned out the sound for viewers. But. Okay, that said it was the fastest. Okay. That actually got said it was the fastest lap, so I'm going to trust that that's correct. There it was. Okay. We've achieved it. We've definitely achieved it. All right. We've definitely achieved a faster lap. So, my theory holds true so far. Uh, I will say that uh, the, uh, honestly, I, I feel like I was having a, an easier time controlling the Corvette than the Aston Martin, but then the Aston Martin did achieve a higher speed. So, there is that. But again, chappies, when you wreck like that, when you drift around quarters like that, you're not going to win. You're not going to win a race. Uh, you, you're better off taking those corners slower and not sticking the the ass of the car out like that, and, and not scra scratching the uh, barricades around, uh, which you can't help with the Mustang. You you surely heard it how how loud the uh, Mustang was scratching those barricades around the, the, the track. All right. Now we have the um, Mercedes AMG. This is hard to remember. Mercedes AMG C63 DTM. That's a mouthful. And this is a. This was a um, a presentation car. Okay, 2018 is that they Outside lane, trying to beat the fastest lap of the uh, Aston Martin GT3. paid for it but we did a we get a long beat that means it was the fastest lap so far oh D slot okay I'm really pushing this to try to lap itself or beat its own time here Oh, we that's a terrible place to do slot. Probably not great for the track either. Oh, that drift. Well, 
once again, Chaffees, we've peaked early with the Mercedes. We've beaten the fastest lap around by the uh, Aston Martin, but we can't really seem to improve on it. we got it finally all right and i don't think we're gonna top that so yeah the order as predicted is holding up but now let's see if the porsche 911 rsr can clock the fastest lap of all i'm confident that it can it's never let me down so now i might crash it several times but here we go all right. Uh, immediately. Already. Got it. Got it? Okay. I'm essentially just holding the trigger down all the way except for that curve, okay? Yep. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> That's a neat trick. Okay. So essentially, this car is so good that I need to bump this up another skill level, at least, okay? There. Oh, dear. Some backspin on that. What I'm going to do this time is use the brake button on the controller. Now, this is not a good idea, but I'm going to see how that, if we can get another fastest lap out of that. <laughs> okay, I think we've uh, reached our upper limit on speed here, Chef. Almost did it again. Um, yeah, I really think we've uh, pushed this car as far as it's going to go. Oh! Ooh! Oh, too fast, too fast. All right, well, as I predicted, this is the fastest car. And I didn't want to record times for this. I just wanted this to, to, to separate, you know, just to do a different method to see if I got the same results. And I think the wild card in my fleet is the Corvette 
as opposed to the Aston Martin. Uh, I have clocked a faster time with the Corvette in the past, the last race night actually, but I think we pretty much know the uh, capabilities of each of these cars now. So moving forward, I can begin to test the limits of performance versus uh, safety. And what I mean is uh, the, the top speeds without crashing at all. And I think you're going to see my times go down as a result. Uh, and that makes sense. I mean, the laws of physics are the laws of physics. If you're you can only push anything so far before it goes off a course. And um, I think uh, now that I've lived with these cars a little bit and uh, figured out what's good and what's bad about each of them, uh, for full disclosure, there's nothing bad about that Porsche 911. Um, it's a superb slot car, in my opinion. I probably wouldn't win a race against somebody's $350 souped up SCX slot car, but uh, that's you're comparing apples to oranges there. Uh, but then on the other hand, you got this Ford Mustang that barely even works as a slot car, and uh, it would probably be problematic as a pace car. So I, uh, I just, I just feel really ripped off by this one, Chappie. Uh, Fifty-five bucks retail. Well, I don't even know what the retail price is on these things, but. 55 bucks for a, a, a poor performing slot car. Um, uh, that gives me pause about buying any more of these, honestly. It's sort of, it feels like it's just a lottery. It's just a luck of the draw. You might get a good one, you might get a bad one, and I don't like that. That's like buying a Hasbro action figure, honestly. And it shouldn't be that way. But, um, yeah. The order was Porsche 911 RSR, followed by the Mercedes AMG C63 DTM. Followed by the Aston Martin Vantage GT3, followed by the uh, uh, Chevrolet Corvette C7.R, followed by the Ford Mustang GTY. And uh, I have a feeling, Chappies, that's how it's going to be. Uh, it, I don't think any amount of customization or souping up or running out and buying better tires is going to change the order in which, or motors or lights or digital chips and all that stuff is going to change the order in which these. Uh, five slot cars perform uh but that remains to be seen maybe i'll surprise myself maybe i'll surprise viewers uh, or maybe not maybe uh it, maybe what i've said is gospel it's we don't know yet we, you know it's just going to take months of observation and, and practice and experimentation but no i think moving forward i don't like crashing these things because it damages them and uh, as it, you know the uh taillight gone out on my uh, Aston Martin and the, the spoiler breaking on my Corvette, and geez, the uh, the Mustang is destroying the barriers. Uh, the I mean, you can kind of see. Well, no, you probably can't see it on camera. There may you might be able to see some of the blue paint that's just you know scratched along the uh, inside of the barriers there just from this one scraping against them every time. It's uh, I may end up breaking those off. I might do it uh, because I'm getting a, a little tired of having to uh, reshape the barricades after every race. But I'm more or less, uh, you know, happy with th three. We'll say three of these cars. I'm really happy with the Corvette. I wish was better. It's my favorite car of the bunch, but it doesn't perform that well. And uh, the Mustang is hopeless. But um, uh, and I, I really hope that this manufacturer doesn't purposely make the American name brand cars worse than the European cars as some sort of matter of principle or spite. Uh, because you're, you're really, if you do sh petty shit like that, you're, you're really limiting the amount of money I'm willing to spend on other products. And, uh, I mean, I like European touring cars, certainly, but uh, I think that's a pretty petty thing to do, if that's what's going on here. It's, it's, it's a weird coincidence that my two worst cars are the Ford and the Chevrolet. Uh, but it is what it is, Chappies. And uh, tune in next time. We'll go back to the more traditional uh, race night format where I'm just doing practice laps at this point because it's, it's, it's just too dangerous to race against a ghost car. These things are not that durable. And I'm, I'm frankly, I'm, you know, if one of these breaks and it becomes inoperative, well, I'm out 55 bucks. And um, I just don't have the disposable income to, to run out and soup these things up or reinforce them or replace them when they break. So i got to be somewhat careful with them. Okay. Well, till then, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.